Welcome back to episode number five of the Creatively Connected Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Rippey, and we're here today with a very special, a talented uh, artist and photographer, tour manager. He's a jack of all trades. So John Galbraith, we have him in the studio tonight. Thanks yes, for sir. joining us, man. Yes, sir. Thanks for Taking having me. Taking the time out of his busy schedule to, to hop on the podcast. So uh, we'll, we'll jump straight into it. He is, like I said, he's a photographer, an artist, tour manager. Um, for many a different artist, one being uh, Taylor Holder, yeah. big name, taking uh, taking the country music scene by storm right now. People thought yeah. he was just a, a social media guy, but now he's you know full blown country artist. And I love yeah. to see that. So um, we have him in the studio tonight. So uh, other than that, just give a brief rundown on you know who you are and, and what it is you do, and you know your your title that you would give yourself. I know we wear Dude, many of them. That's so. the thing is that like so so I. I think like the best way to kind of do it is give you more of a preface on like me and Taylor's relationship. And that's like, I met Taylor when we were out in LA and um, it was right when he was really starting the whole music thing. And really right when he was starting to try the whole country music thing and get back to his roots. And um, originally I was just over there trying to help him out and like do his videography, help with his content. Like it started there with, with little TikTok promos here, a YouTube video here and Instagram right. pictures there. And then like we moved to Nashville together in October of twenty. Two, I guess October of twenty two. Not yeah. too long ago, then. Yeah, about a little okay. bit over a year and a half, or a year and three months ago. Um, and so, whenever that happened, we left our entire team that we had in LA because none of them really wanted to move. They just all kind of were like, "Hey, we're really happy, happy in LA, and we wish them the best." And so, like, let them kind of do their thing out there. And, right. And when we got out here, it was kind of like, "Hey, I'll just like fill in for a few things here and there, and just until we get a team built in Nashville." And more or less, it's kind of just been me and Taylor just taking it by storm, just kind of doing it doing everything together i mean it's been i guess a year and four months of us just non-stop just grinding, grinding. Working, fit, and really just figuring it out that's been the right. coolest part too is that like these moments like we've had we've we've uh we've lived with about like 10 different people over the past like year and a half yeah and then um that can be a, a it's whole been thing stressful, itself, yeah. but like going through these moments with all these kids that are like some of our best friends like having like I mean, Caden McGuire is a good friend of ours that lived with us. He's doing music now. Yeah. Um, Tyler Big Herring, man. who's lived with us all the way in LA, just is, is uh, recording a song for his girlfriend right now. And like, like everything about all this stuff is like just seeing everybody figure it out and like get into this music scene. It's been like really cool yeah. to watch and like really just super interesting. Honestly. Yeah, kind of under like an, one umbrella, but everyone's kind of creative in their own in their own way and they're all yeah. doing their own thing. And that's dope. Um, so y'all met in LA. What when did you and, and Taylor meet and, and how did y'all kinda link up, you know? Super randomly, honestly. So I was actually out there with with Tyler Herring. We we worked together in Tuscaloosa in twenty twenty a lot. And he wanted to go out to LA and do some content and be be this influencer kid. And so we went out there and uh we me and Tyler had a mutual friend with Taylor. His name's Kyle Massey. I don't know okay. if you know who that is. It's Corey in the house, which is really and random. Shout out Kyle, cool. by the way. Kyle's the goat. Kyle introduced us. Oh, he introduced man. us in 2020, middle of COVID. We went out, hung out with everybody and, and met Taylor. And uh, and then we came back like four days later. And then Tyler ended up in LA before me. And then I ended up out there. And then we kind of just re reconnected slowly. Yeah. But like, cool, it's man. been crazy. And that was kind of as Taylor was blowing up on social media that was he no he was already already yeah he was already up there got you yeah cool. he was up there for sure sweet man so it, it sounds like you and taylor i mean obviously i know a little bit about y'all's y'all's history but y'all it sounds like y'all been you know mm -hmm. doing work and just life and friendship yeah, together and like for, that's, for quite some time that's something that like me and him will always speak on too it's like coming from LA to Nashville, like one, and when Taylor mentioned like, you want to come to Nashville and do country music, it was like, it was my opportunity to be a little bit closer to home. Cause I, I had done LA for about a year at that point, And I realized real quick that that just wasn't the place for me. Where it was home? kind of Alabama. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm from like three hour, three and a half hours away, roll tide, like let's go, like <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. And, um, so like originally it was like, Hey, that's an opportunity for me to like get back home and like be close to the family and Absolutely. like stay with my roots. And then, um, the the last three or four months that we were in LA, it was really just like, hey, there's not like real people out here, like something something that like NPCs, dude. It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's just every single person that wanted to like come over or hang out or do this or do that. It was like, hey, let's shoot this. Hey, let's take this. Let's post this here. Let's post this yeah. there. And it was never it was never about being a friend. We like me and Taylor like related so much to like we just go outside and throw baseball in Nashville. Like we'll just right. go outside and literally just yeah. throw a baseball dude, around, just hang out, stuff, just like yeah. regular regular stuff. 
and it's it's great and like people here will do that with us you know what i mean right. and that's the difference like when we were on tour me taylor matt schuster and matt's videographer his name's gage and we'd all just go out there and throw yeah. for just an hour and Baseball a half before a show and just yeah. like rap sound check go do that hang out and just vibe out as like friends and homies and like there was never anything connected to it saying like oh let's film it so we can like get this post for this or like let's do this so we can be seen with this person it was right. just like it was real yeah, so I, it was really cool. I, I've heard that about LA that it's just like no one wants to, you know. And I get that you have to keep business and and you know friendship. Somewhat there has to be a balance, you mm -hmm. know. But like I've heard that the people out in LA that it's just it's not that you're yeah. you're not the first person that has said yeah. that. So well, that's cool. It sounds. I mean, obviously y'all are killing it in Nashville so far. Oh, it's been uh, great. Y'all, I think this is more more subtle and and more up y'all's. I think Alex. this is right where we're supposed yeah. to be. I mean, you know it because it's it's more yeah. like you said, it's more home to you. Yeah, so. it's it's great. Here. Yeah, we well, love it. Y'all are killing it, man. So that kind of kind of answers, you know, a couple of the questions I have. But we'll we'll take a, another route here. Um, how did you get started in photography? <laughs> so it honestly, it fell in my lap, and it's the weirdest thing because it was like when so when I was like sixteen, I. I played sports growing up, but I always realized I was like, yo, look, I'm five foot eight, I'm white. Like, I'm not making the league. Like, dude, like if I was like, if I was running a four two forty in sixth grade, maybe I'd have a different opinion on myself. And I might right. be like, hey, we'll make it one day. I wasn't. And so I was like, <laughs> I want to stay close to the games and like want to stay close to sports. And um, so I just picked up my phone and started just filming my friends making like stupid little videos or taking stupid little pictures and doing yeah. like a graphic edit here on like a superimpose app and like slowly but surely like doing different stuff and just pulling bits and pieces as yeah. time went on and, yeah. and it went from like it, but it was cool though like the journey was super dope it was it was starting out like with with just like my close like friends in my high school and then like yeah. this five-star kid from uh rival high school was like yo you gotta come shoot me yeah and i was like all right bet and so like slid over there shot him and then like it spiraled from football over to basketball and i was traveling with this eybl guy and like all this stuff and nice. so like it all just went in that direction of like it fell in my lap and like just for the love of the game kind of thing and it, yeah. it just worked I, I feel like and myself included like i was a sports guy but you know we're about yeah. we're about the same height but yeah. you know real realistic i was a, a good yeah. high school athlete but yeah it's yeah. not it's ain't taking me to the league um I, but like myself i wanted to stay around the game so sports is kind of yeah. how i got into it before you know the music stuff um where, where did you go? Did you go to college for, you know? No. So, I mean, dude, there's a whole other story I can get into, but I don't think we have time to get into that one on this one. The next yes. one we can. I, yeah, so yeah. I started off at UA, but I dropped out. Okay. And the dropout story is a whole, like, whole I could go topic. down a, a rabbit hole about that one. So yeah. we'll get into it another time. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I started out at UA because, I mean, I grew up in Tuscaloosa. It was just super easy. Did that. Um, lasted like three, six months, like semester. That was yeah. it. Just tapped the, the out. The typical. Yeah, impression. tapped out. Um, got a job doing marketing at a car dealership so i had to learn yeah. how to be a lot more creative with that yeah enough. like that was something that was really cool about like that two years of my life was that like there's only eight cars realistically at each like new dealership and right. so like i had to find different ways to like shoot each car like every <laughs> single day because like we Absolutely. had to post, like, have to do things and so like that was cool doing stuff like that and then um quit that and i started working with these seven on seven trainers and like okay. these gym trainers back in tuscaloosa and I mean, they were bringing me to Dallas for a seven on seven tournament. They were bringing me to Miami. They were bringing me, uh, where all did we go? I think we did one in LA. They do those everywhere. And, and it man. was just all, I mean, it was just nonstop. Yeah. So you were just doing videography, yeah, videography for them. And that, nice. that plugged me a lot more with like back to the athletes. Cause I had taken yeah. a break from the athletes cause I was sure. doing the whole like car, car marketing. Scene, and, yeah. yeah. Cause I was, I was, and there's a market for that on. too. There's oh, a, there it is. there's a crazy market for, for car scenes, but I mean, like you said, you, there's only so many different ways yeah, you can shoot a, like, a, a sitting car before you get into like the rolling shots and all yeah. of that. I've never dove into car photography. It's fascinating. People, you know, really kill that industry. But yeah, uh, so that you got back on on the sports mm -hmm. train. I was looking at your Instagram today. I seen you did some work with Bryce Young at, at some point. Yeah, in so like Bryce. I mean, those Bryce. I remember. I'm I'm at Bryce the like the first week that he came onto campus. Nice. Like that was, that was kind of my little crew right there. We went out there. Uh, it was during COVID. This is actually a great story. Um, it was during COVID and um, we were out there with these two trainers, Ro Kane and uh, my boy Christian. And um, they were training like Jalen Waddle, Pat Sertan, um, 
Mac Jones was out there consistently. Devontae Smith was out there consistently. Jerry Judy was out there. Like all, Malachi all Moore. Big, like huge guys. It's, it's just the, that team, like that massive team. Yeah. And so like that was really cool. And like those, I mean, those two guys did did the world for me and like helped put me on the map a lot just because they got my name spread out oh, because of sure. how notable they were. Right. Um, all I had to do is tag you one time. Yeah. And, and then I'm, hey, this athlete needs something. This athlete needs something. Then connect with other photographers throughout the country as well. Like, right. It was super dope. Man, that's cool just getting to work with those dudes at, you know, their early yeah. stages. Obviously, they were well known then, but then that, all the success yeah. they had in championships. That's, it's super dope to, like, look back and see it, yeah. honestly. So you went into college, like, already doing work mm -hmm. and stuff. You picked it up in high school, so that's mm -hmm. that's really cool. Uh, see, I, I'd never touched a camera until, like, my freshman year of college. I think that was, oh, no, that was when I picked it up. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I had a camera. I think I was shooting all of this on my phone doing, or yeah. maybe, like, a sixty dollar so camcorder from like CVS, <laughs> like it wasn't even Black like from Best Buy type stuff. Like, yeah. and and Getting I didn't out get my first camera. No, yeah, and I didn't think I got my first camera until probably I had like six months to a year at that car dealership. Like I had already done marketing, oh, wow. and I was like doing like just regular marketing stuff. Yeah. I was like, no, I want to get back into photography. So you was pretty far into it. Before yeah, because yeah, because I went to school gear. for marketing. Like that was the original plan was to do okay. marketing, public relations, communications, like all that kind of stuff. And so going back into that that job, I was like, hey, like I still had a love for photography. Sure. And so I, then I was like, all right, let me get a camera and let me figure this out. And nice. then it kind of re re went down that full loop circle then, moment. Yeah. Came back and fell in your lap. It's yeah. crazy how that can that can work out. That's cool, man. So it's so like you had a you've had a bunch of you know different realms that you've kind of worked in, but oh, yeah. but had to you know be creative within you know all of those so mm -hmm. and in, in the end it's kind of led you back to doing photography you know and, it and always comes back did you do photo first or video or I just kind of at the same tell time you, yeah. yeah like that's and kind of what you were saying earlier it's like there's so many titles like jack of all trades it's like that's kind of where i've like my niche has been like no niche yeah. which is super random i think it sounds stupid when i say it but like it's i'm decent at everything and i'm not great at anything yeah but like in the social world that like I kind of work in, it's like you don't like for someone who's just trying to push as much content as possible and as much yeah. different content as possible. Yeah. That's where I think I was able to like kind of thrive with it was that some people were like, oh, I want the most cinematic video and like or they're, they're going to hit up this video for the most cinematic video possible. Yeah. But their pictures or their graphics or whatever the other thing Thumbnail's is. Thumbnail's not going to stand yeah, out. Yeah, it's not going to be yeah. as decent. Yeah, and so like being able to just spread myself on that. Like I'm not the best with After Effects, you know what I mean? Right. But I can get it done. Yeah. And I'm not the best at cinematography and light lighting sure. and color grading, but I can get it done. And so like that's where I've kind of like, I've just spread myself across the whole board. Yeah. A lot of people would argue that like it's better to, you know, be... Yeah be a hone in on one thing but it's for yourself stretching yourself across the board has extended your reach and yeah. extended your opportunities and careers so i'm all for you know being a jack of all trades if you know it's possible it's not the easiest thing to do you have to balance a lot and you're always doing something different every day so yeah but i, I think, think i've enjoyed well. it yeah i think i've enjoyed it more than just having one one thing too i think if i had one thing i'd get bored really quick yeah that's something i've always noticed about myself is just like once i do one thing for like a certain amount of time I'm like all right something else something else something else absolutely and so like being able to like just focus on everything a little bit every other day has been like really good to like keeps you from it keeps the growth too and keeps absolutely. me from burning out yeah burnout's a it's a real thing oh it's it, crazy it will happen so i i commend you for being a jack of all trades um so We'll switch over to talking about tour a little bit. Mm -hmm. You, how long have you, you know, been in? I know you, you started out with Taylor mm -hmm. there too. Yeah. So y'all, I know y'all went on a tour at the end of last year with Dylan yeah. Scott. Talk about that a little Dude, bit. I'm that sure that, was the I kept up with it on social media. It looked like it was a badass tour. <laughs> that was the coolest experience of my life. Like, like I mean, like we kind of talked about. Like I've done like the athlete side of things, the club side of things, and like the the influencer side of things. But like that was really my first like time like really experiencing like music, like photography, and sure. videography on like a consistent basis. Yeah. And like going out there with those guys, like Dylan's team was great. I mean, Cam Pack, he his his whole photography. Oh, he's stuff, badass. Like, man. He's great. Shout out Cam. Yeah. I've been shout following out Cam him for a minute. He's... Yeah. Shout out Cam, and then Matt Schuster, his whole team, hilarious, great people. And then like our group was always like. We were new, right? Yeah. Everybody kind of knew we were new, and no one really. Is that knew Taylor's what to first tour? His oh. first tour, wow. in, in opening, that's like, crazy. First slot. Yeah, <laughs> first tour with uh, it, it to be with Dylan Scott. That's yeah, pretty awesome. It was it was super dope, and I mean, we have nothing but love for that crew because like they, Robbie, Robbie's Dylan's TM put me on 
so much game and took me under his wing. And then same with Cam. Cam taught me so many different tricks about concert photography and videography right. that I had never even like initially thought of to like be like, oh, what would be a good idea to fix this problem? In right. my head, it was like, ah, uh, that's a problem. I'll figure that out one day. Like it wasn't even yeah. like, uh, I don't like, I didn't even know where to start with stuff. And he'd be like, oh, I just do this. He'd be like, what? <laughs> like he seems like a, I think I've met him once, but I don't know him that well, but he just too. seems like a very technical, like he knows the technical yeah, side of it. He's like 21, 22. Really? Yeah, he's young. Wow. I think. I didn't know that. Don't, I could be wrong about it. He he's also, you after dude, he's, I'm like 30. <laughs> no, dude, he's, he's such a, He's such a little shit, but like he's <laughs> he's hilarious. So I don't know if he was just like fucking with me and yeah. he's been like, you know, I'm 22, but like right. I swear he told me it was like 21 or 22, like wow. in the middle of that tour. He's been in it for a minute, I feel like. I feel like yeah. I've been following him for, for a while. And how, how are you? 25. 25. Same yeah. here. Cool. Um, yeah, so that, that tour, that was, it was all US based, wasn't it? It was all, it was all East Coast. So it was East like, Coast, yeah. yeah, the farthest west I think we went was like Detroit. You got a favorite memory from from the Dylan Scott tour? Could be show related or travel related. I know sometimes the days off. Honestly, <laughs> the whole thing just blended together. Yeah, that entire because even when we were off tour, like me and Taylor would end up on a trip somewhere, or we would have to go somewhere for work, or like I would go down to like visit my parents in Tuscaloosa for like an hour a football game. So like there was always like stuff going on to where nothing really like sticks out specifically yeah like the one thing i do remember is that like the we had a we had a weekend and it was detroit grand rapids and cincinnati and that weekend i don't know if it was the venues i don't know if it was the vibes i don't know what it was but it was the best weekend <laughs> we had the entire time and it was just super dope that's awesome yeah it's crazy like when you're on a tour everything once it's all wrapped up and in the moment everything kind of blends together oh, but everything. once it's over you're like like you just did all oh, that one weekend. Like I know that one weekend was yeah. great. I couldn't tell you a single thing about it, but it was great. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. But. One, of, one of mine were, was uh, Cruisins. We were just talking about that before yeah, we started Cruisin's recording. And I was like, shout out Wayne and all the people with uh, over there in, in Cruisins. Uh, I think I'm headed back up there this year at some point. So that'll probably be another. Yeah, we're up there on the 8th. On the 8th? Yeah, we're up there February 8th. February 8th, okay. Yeah, and then we're doing Chicago the day after that. Nice. So it'd be a good time. It'd be another oh, another one of those weekends that you that you remember. Um, or don't. Honestly. Yeah, or don't. <laughs> you try to piece it together. Some some weekends on a tour are like that, but you just keep the ball rolling. Um, so obviously Taylor, you know, he's such a big social media presence. Mm -hmm. I think he's got like five million on TikTok, right? Or uh, I think he has there. five million on Instagram, and then Instagram. I think he has. I think he has 20 on TikTok. Oh, wow. I think. I was, uh, Which is that's, nuts. That's 15 million off. My bad. <laughs> My bad, no Taylor. Sense. Oh, he yeah, that's crazy. He and then does he, he does YouTube as well or kind of shied we, more or less away from that? We're possibly coming back to YouTube. Gotcha. gotcha. Up in the air right now. We're kind of, we're figuring out kind of how we want to want to do the socials this year. Yeah. Honestly, we're kind of like going through a big conversation. It's just like yeah. the algorithms are changing what, what the people and the yeah. platforms want. It's like, yeah. I feel like a lot of people are kind of re doing a rebrand this year. I don't know. Uh, but, okay, that's yeah, that's a lot of uh, social media followers. So, obviously, your content, you know, that you create is being put out to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of role does that play in, you know, kind of your mindset going into it? Do you think about, like, oh, this picture, this, you know, recap might get seen by three, four million people. Does that put any extra pressure? Do you even think about that when you're, you know, when you're editing nah, or shooting? Yeah. Not even – not even slightly. And I think that might come from like the, like the conversations we were having earlier, like working with like the, the Jalen models, the Patrick Sertans, like, I mean, the list of that, like Deontay yeah. Wilder is a kid that I've, is a guy that I've worked with. Okay. Like, like the numbers have never, like, I don't know if it's, it seemed like I've just been around high, high profile people. people for a long yeah. time. And so the numbers don't scare me because at the end of the day, I mean, I've worked with like me and Taylor put out a video that did absolutely terrible numbers. Like, like straight up. Like, I mean, that's just the way the algorithms is yeah. is right now. Or like whether we got like community guidelines for it, and then it came back and it didn't hit the algo and yeah. like didn't hit the for you page. So like, there's been times where like we've had shits. Like we've came out and just taken absolute shit on the yeah. on the video. And so, it's it's kind of like appreciate the wins, but just disregard the losses because yeah. it's like, oh yeah, that one did like five mil, cool. Like oh that one did like three. Oh that one did yeah. like whatever it is. And so it's like. It's cool, but it's never anything that I'm sitting there like I'm not chasing the views. I'm chasing sure. just good content. Yeah, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. I feel like good con 
I've said this last episode, regardless of what it is, what hook you use, what mm-hmm. you know strategy you use, if it's good content and it relates to people, it's gonna go and yeah. you know, you can't can't chase the views or, or the numbers once you get, you know, to a certain point that, that kinda just comes with it. Yeah. Uh you you said something about, you know, you've worked with a lot of high high level people. I feel like early on, you know, once you get that the first, you know, big client or, or whatever, first couple, it's like okay, you kind of get used to that. And you being mm-hmm. at a university myself, I was shooting a lot of college football and I was yeah. kind of like the, the go-to videographer yeah, exactly. for the team. And it's like, that really got me like, you know, just used to having, you know, eyes on your work. And then as you get into the music scene, it yeah. gets bigger and bigger, but that's never like the, I don't, I myself don't feel pressure from yeah. that. It's just like, it's at the end of the day, it's I'm creating the art. I just believe in it to get seen by that many people. And like, that's what's yeah. supposed to happen. You know, you're not supposed to create for the same market forever. Yeah. So, um, what advice would you give to an aspiring photographer or tour manager? Um, oh, that, don't ask me for advice for a tour scene. manager. I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> I don't have a single clue. I'm fit. like, that's one where I'm like, said every tour manager ever. <laughs> I'm, apparently, I don't yeah. know. No, like, it, it, it is. Like, I feel like. If you ask that question to any tour manager, a, lo- a lot of the ones I'd know, like, like, I don't know, I'm just out here winging it, I'm just doing it. <laughs> well, okay, so an aspiring uh, tour photographer, videographer, what kind of advice would you give to them to, uh, you know, break and emerge into the scene? Honestly, that's something that's like always been like weird to me. Cause like, like I was saying is like, this is all kind of like fell in my lap. I know a lot of people don't get that opportunity, but I've also realized there's some jobs that I'd have to push for. And it's like those jobs that you're pushing for and those jobs that you want don't stop because like, just cause someone like I've had people say no to me for three months and then like the very next day, I'm like, dude, I'm going to reach out one more time. Let me see what I got. Yeah. The they job need you. immediately, immediately hit me back. They're like, Oh yeah. Like I've been trying to work with you for the past three months. I'm just tied up with this, this yeah. and that. And I'm like, whole time you thought this person oh, hates yeah, me and I'm like, just been busy doing yeah, it's their like, own thing. It's really just like, don't quit. Like that's, that's always been the thing. It's like, what, what's the point in doing all this? If you're just going to stop one day and Absolutely. like not pursue it like the entire extent that you can. Yeah. I feel like they're like in that sense, you, a lot of people will get a, a react emotionally about it. Like, Oh, this person, they don't, they don't fuck with me. Or like, yeah. you know, they don't want to work with me, but it's like, no, everyone's got, their own stuff going on and then if you get emotional and burn that bridge however then it's like okay well that's when on that actually, next day that's when it's torched yeah that's, that's when it's torched, torched is torched. when you get emotional and you actually like lose out on opportunities yeah and i mean even like like and another thing too is that like this i think this is actually a better one for me and it's even if you fuck it up turn the shit in get it done and then circle back and still offer to like hey i'm still here because I've fucked up, dude. I remember this is... This Rewind is, that and listen to that again if you didn't catch that the first time. He's, he's dropping gems right it's now. It's like, dude, I remember... So I got flown out to Miami by this jeweler. This is this story's hilarious. To the, by this jeweler. His name's Leo Frost. He's a goat. He's great. He's one of the best in the game. He's working with Antonio Brown. And I'm, I'm tasked with going to shoot this exchange of jewelry and <laughs> get out. Like, that was, that was what I was supposed to do. We get in there, we do the trade-off. Actually, no, 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 we don't even do the trade-off. We get in there, I get offered a lot of tequila <laughs> and a lot of vitamins. We'll go with that. Okay. And <laughs> I end up in a not-so-good headspace. Sure. And then we finally exchange the jewelry, but I do not have my camera out. I missed the whole thing. <laughs> but we end up going to Antonio Brown's studio later that night, and he cuts the whole thing. Like, the whole story is actually wild, too. But we go to his studio while he's cutting his rap album in the middle of that whole thing. And so I get great shots, <laughs> oh, so and I get like something. this is like prime AB. This is like right before the CTE kicked in. This was <laughs> right before, this is right before the man this, went crazy. This is gold. It, and so it was, it's a great, it was a great moment, but like, completely chalked it completely botched it ended up with yeah. like three pictures to work out of and like wow. a 10 15 second video yeah and like sure enough like i get everything into him i was like video sucks he's like appreciate the pictures though the pictures turned out fire i was like thank goodness i did something right here and then like we still ended up working together he would come to tuscaloosa and, and work with some athletes that were entering the draft and stuff and get their like draft chains he'd be like yo i need something from you today yeah and so like by i think just because i was able to sit there and be like hey i know i fucked up the video of the exchange and like all the real shit of it I got you some great pictures and like just always be there to like think of how you can cover your asshole. That's kind of what I'm doing. Absolutely, yeah. He 
he probably respected you a lot because you admitted like, yo, I, I yeah, this video, like, I botched it. But like, okay. here's the photos he could still see, you know, the potential in you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely cover your ass and, you know, don't try to cover, you know, like cover up, you know, yeah. make, make up it's something like it's, alive. It's, it's not really cover it up. It's more like yeah. take ownership and figure out a way to show you still have value and have worth to these clients. Absolutely. That's a much better way to put what Absolutely. you said. It's definitely not covering my ass. No, it's like yeah, yeah. showing that there's still value in everything Absolutely. that we do. Absolutely. Show up more than, yeah. more than anything. Uh, so you worked with obviously a lot of, you know, a lot of people, a lot of high level clients. How do you stay inspired and motivated in your, in your work to, you know, continue going? Honestly, it's one of the dumbest things ever, but it's just like, I just want to make dope shit. Yeah. Like, that's it. It's never been about, like, like, even when I moved to L.A., it wasn't to, like, work with Taylor Holder. Like, love you, bro. The best friend. <laughs> I'm not saying that in a bad way, but, like, it wasn't to go work with him. It wasn't right. to go make a fuck ton of cash. It was yeah. like, I'm good in Alabama. I want to be good in L.A. I want to be good in Miami. I want to be good in New York. Absolutely. Like, I want to be able to show off that I'm not just good in, like, some rural, like, small town. Like, yeah. I can go put out, like, good content in, in major markets and the biggest and like biggest. that was that was the thing is like i just want to make dope shit absolutely i, yeah. I can't agree and with i don't think it'll ever stop either yeah so and then all of the accolades and you know success and money that just comes with it yeah and that's perks yeah that's it's monopoly money at that point it's just, it's just to have a little bit more fun if someone's wanting to you know become a creative full-time whether it's you know in the music industry or graphic designer or Entrepreneur, what advice can you give to them to to take that leap of faith and maybe leave their nine to five and and work for themselves full time? Damn, <laughs> I don't. I'm, I remember when I did it. Make it was like, shit. yeah. I mean, honestly, like that's kind of like what it was. It was it was I had done enough for myself to be like I was confident myself to know to know my worth. If you know your worth, then it's time. If, if yeah. you're still on that, because like I was at this point for a long time too of like, oh, I'll do it for him for free because like I know that I'm not there yet or blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, I don't know what to charge him because I'm still so new. And then like once I got to the point where I was like, I know my rates, I know my worth, I know my stuff. And like yeah. those, that's not easy, by the way. I'm yeah. not saying that as like a, oh, it's going to take you three days and you'll figure it out. And you're going to go right. out and do everything. Yeah. And it's like, it was tough. It was really hard. But like once I got to that point that's when I finally felt comfortable because I was able to understand like, hey, I'm going to be able to make enough money to like cover my ass yeah. and like pay rent, pay my car note, pay insurance, pay phone bills, pay this, still right. go out to the bars, like right. all right. of that stuff. And so like, Is know it? your worth. I think once, and that takes so much though. Like that's a yeah. hard, that's a hard thing to be like, do that's you, the advice. Do you, think like, it's a, it. do you think it's a milestone that you reach when you work with someone of status or when you acquire? No. No. I think it has nothing to do with the status. I think it has everything because like, I would give more stuff to the to the smaller clients than I did the big ones. Because yeah. I knew the big clients had the money. The small right. clients were the ones that I was like, not And they really showing. appreciate it. Yeah, more, it's like you appreciate than, it, like yeah. you're good. Like big clients, you got the cash, like give yeah. me back kind of thing. Absolutely. But it was like, it honestly came from, from looking around and looking at all these other creatives that I've admired for so long and I still do. But it's saying, oh, shit, I compete. Yeah. It's realizing, like, it's it's literally, like, looking at a picture that I posted three days ago and looking at a picture they posted seven days ago or, like, that day or whatever it is and being like, oh, shit, I compete. It's like that was my moment when I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm getting, like, I'm close. Like, it wasn't like I'm there immediately. Right. But it was like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty fucking close. And so I worked on it for another two, three months, and I was finally like, yo, I'm ready. I feel like it, every creative has that, you know, light switch moment yeah. where it, it goes off. It's like, whether it's like you just said, you know, you're seeing someone's work and be like, okay, I can do the, the yeah. same. The it's same like, I can shit. do this. Yeah. yeah. And then it, it it's really just making that jump. Once you make that jump, I feel like you, you, you go up regardless. Obviously, yeah. it's not a straight shot up, but like you stay consistent at it. You can easily do that full time. So how did, wait, one thing. How did you learn how to do photography and videography? <sighs> By... A lot of trial and error, just shooting my friends' just party and like in college. Yeah, that's when I that's yeah. when I picked up a camera and I was in a fraternity in college. So I was going to tailgates and I was just shooting stuff, you know, tailgate you party. Yes, they were a big. <laughs> they, were, they were they were a big like I watched them in high school before I yeah. even did any of this, and it was like I I just love. I was like I got to do this when I get to college. Like yeah. in my mind, I was, but you know, it was it was doing. But yes, I'm schmack. They. Dude. 
they were running the game back on that's main, how that's like Twitter, how i learned it? that was like so like Twitter that's how like i learned it was like going on youtube and watching videos yeah. and like that's where i learned like all of my creative instincts that's another thing i would say for creatives get on youtube that yep. shit taught youtube me. though youtube university was a real thing i yeah. did not take a single class in college for videography photography i didn't take one in high school let me tell you this i went to high school and i took one class in like tv and broadcast really the teacher the first week immediately goes hey I just want to let you know uh you don't have to show up at all <laughs> just show up once a month turn in your project and get out yeah, like you're good yeah. yeah he was like you're good damn <laughs> like youtube university that's, <coughs> that's my thing that's my advice yeah. get on youtube to, to answer your question youtube was was how i learned you know i was studying it yeah. in school i switched so i was marketing at one point switched like four majors within my first year and a half uh before I picked up a camera and then I picked up a camera and I graduated with a broadcasting degree. Mm -hmm. But like that was so like corporate side, like, you know, TV camera work and stuff. And I was YouTube university. I say yeah. that I say I have a, a bachelor's degree from Western Kentucky university and a second degree from YouTube university. So I wish Sorry. I could like log my hours and, and see how, yeah, see how much on. I actually yeah. do. I'd love to see that. I used to, we had these little like uh, VO bikes. You could rent them on campus. And I was living in an apartment right across the street from campus. When I was first starting out, I would ride it. I'd rent one, ride it over to the computer lab that had the big uh, desktop Max, and it was open 24-7, and I would just be in there editing, bro, YouTube on half the screen, and then Premiere Pro open on the other half. I'd pull, like, just... stock footage off YouTube, like, just go download it, and then just yeah. learn how to edit it off the, like, Literally, it man. was crazy, like, God, all that dude. stuff. I wish I did more, like, behind the scenes. I, now I do a lot of behind the scenes of myself, but I wish I did it more than just to like oh, it is. watch those days like, i feel like that that would, would be like i would love hitting. to see like me learning that shit yeah. i would love to go back and just watch how yeah. i did that how slow the process oh and stuff gosh. was it was feels like forever ago but it was for i mean we're the same age so about yeah. five six ish years Seriously. you know been in it for a little bit though approaching you know a little over half a decade so that's cool man so it sounds like we have you know obviously every creative is, is different but it sounds like we have a lot of similarities a lot of as similarities, far as you know, sure. to come up yeah. shooting sports and kind of just getting into music just by on the whim yeah. you, know, you didn't really plan for it but it kind of kind of happened um so what's some uh plans you know for this new year we're a couple of weeks into it 2024 i know y'all got a, a tour coming up yeah we got a few dates coming we got four in february and then we're doing a lot of fairs and festivals this year i mean with taylor nice. being so new we want to get out there see what kind of tickets we can sell Absolutely. see how that goes all february and then uh really just jump into this fair and festival market to kind of like expand the yeah expand, expand the whole the growth. horizons yeah. yeah and that crazy like taylor's so like you know so many people know him but like win the tour and you know if he's headlining you know he could still he could be a huge celebrity but selling tickets it's a it's a completely it's totally different and, and like, so like that's i think that's the biggest thing about this year too it's like we got a lot of good music on the way we have we have a lot of shows and uh i really think this is a year that like taylor taylor's gonna be able to look back and be like hey country music i'm here to stay yeah like it's not just like it, he was some influencer that wanted to try music and it's right. like no like he loves this stuff and, and, he's, and he's really got a he's he's good yeah and he's got a passion for it and so he's he's going to continue to work on it and continue to get better and and put out music and and do shows man and yeah. it's gonna be sick man i wish wish him all the all the best this mm. year and you yourself because you. you'll be all that's going to be happening but the cool thing about our jobs is we get to document all of yeah. that and you know have it on footage and you never know what Obviously, we're putting out a lot of it out on social media right now, but you never know yeah. five, 10, 15 years from now when, you know, Netflix might call and they need, you know, Dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, you never know. So make sure you back up your footage and your, all your storage. Oh, yeah. you I mean, that. we have footage from the day we started working together. Like, that's, we keep everything. Yeah. Because you never know. Absolutely. That's cool, man. Well, wish you both and all of y'all's crew the, the best this uh, this year. Hopefully we never know. I, I'm working with a couple different artists this year, so might might cross paths on, yeah. on some runs. That'd, that'd be, be cool. sick. We'd have to do a little little quick episode too. On that'd be it, sweet. So. Doing it fest doing it at festivals, that'd be, Yo, that'd be dude, solid. I love festivals, man. Yeah. Uh, what's what's your favorite festival real quick for Dude, you? right now, tailgates. tailgates I, but man. I love Austin Wayne. I love like that squad, like yeah. Everything about like that little festival has been they they've always treated us like family. Whether we were playing cruisins, whether we were visiting for tailgates, whether we we're playing tailgates this year, and so like shout out to those guys, shout out yeah. to cruisins Farmington Road, and shout out to tailgates and tall boys. Like they're great. Absolutely, I feel like 
that festival is just it's its own thing you know you have mm -hmm. you have bigger festivals but they're all kind of similar you know yeah. big artists but and you know tailgates has big artists as well but it's, it's its own vibe you know so some of the yeah. mud parks they have you know it's a different vibe so yeah. shout out to cruisins and tailgate and tall boys away and all of you guys uh keep doing your thing uh where can the people follow you on um, social media john r galbraith john Just r galbraith well, it should be all of them Go follow him. Check out his work. Does a yeah. lot of, a lot of photography and video for Taylor Holder and and uh, other artists as well. You live live with Taylor too, right? Yeah, we're roommates. So. We do. It's. I was watching your TikToks <laughs> People, earlier. Yeah, it's bad. It's so <laughs> behind bad. the we, scenes, man. Living with with an artist is not an easy thing. I lived with uh, with uh, Chase, you know, Matthew yeah. for for about a year. And shout out to them, you know, no, no harm, but it's just, it's a different lifestyle, you know? Well, I mean, that's, that's the thing is that like, we kind of started off as friends before we started working together. And then like yeah. now, like, I mean, now we're definitely more like business partners than sure. friends, but sure. like, we definitely have those moments where it's like, dude, I remember the other day, like, I just like Irish goodbye the shit out of something, whatever it was <laughs> we were doing. And he calls me, and goes, dude, where are you? We tell each other everything. What's up? Where'd you go? <laughs> he was like, what happened? I was like, dude, like, my bad. Bro's I, feeling. Just, I just wanted to go to sleep. I think we we're at the top <laughs> golf or something. And, and it was so funny. That's funny. Man. But like, that's like, that's the love that we have for each other too. It's like, yeah. same thing with him. It's like, if he ever does something, he's like sketches off and I'm like, yo, yo, where, where are you at, bro? Like what happened? Like, why what normal? Yeah. Bro? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa, wait a second. Come back and hug yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, bro. Come, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that's my brother for real. Like I'll, I'll do, I'll do a lot for him. Absolutely. I don't. As I'm sure he would for you. And so yeah. it seems like y'all got a y'all got a cold click. I know we were out at Aldine's for, uh the other couple weeks ago and yeah. y'all's whole crew there, uh Skylar, you know, I talked oh, about with him. Squad, talked yeah. about with him for a little bit and uh and I met Caden a few times out on some runs. So uh yeah, y'all so it seems like y'all got a you know, a good com yeah. camaraderie between y'all's y'all's whole crew. So that's dope. That's the homies. John, appreciate you coming on today and you know, sharing your expertise and some funny stories, tour stories. Um, that's all we have time for today for episode five. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we no. get out of here? We're good. All good. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. If you're tired of using business cards, then the link will be in the description to get your Popple card. You can use my coupon code, Chris Rippey, and get 20% off. It's 2024. No need for paper business cards. You can tap any device and get yours and all your links will pop up and I highly recommend it. I use it all the time and it's really good for networking. Appreciate you tuning in for episode five of the Creatively Connected podcast. I'm your host, Chris Rippey, my boy, John, and we'll see you next week. Deuces. <laughs>